I'm Dr. Anton Jorgensen. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon at uh, Ortho San Antonio. I'm here at our offices in Bernie, Texas. We also have clinics and offices in San Antonio. I'm here today to talk about an important and often overlooked cause of low back pain. The sacroiliac joint simply is the joint between the sacrum and the ilium. It acts as the region of the body where forces from the lower extremities in the pelvis are transmitted to the spine. And conversely, the weight of the spine above the pelvis is transmitted to the pelvis across the sacroiliac joint. One of the challenging things about making the diagnosis of sacroiliac joint pain and sacroiliac dysfunction is that there is a broad spectrum of symptoms that patients complain of or that are associated with uh, sacroiliac joint dysfunction. Prior to the surgery, I kept telling people that, guy, my hip was killing me. And I kept saying, it's my hip, it's my hip. But they were saying, no, it's your back. But it, it was, it was just a steady jabbing and every once in a while running down my, you know, leg. But primarily it was the ice pick stabbing me in, the, in that area. I had three ablations on my back. I did TENS, electrostimula. I did dry needling, physical therapy, heat, massages, chiropractor. I did everything. Nothing worked. It just, it just would not go away. A lot of times, a condition like mine is misdiagnosed by other doctors. And after he did his exam to me, he said, it is not your spine, it is your SI joint that is the issue, and we've discussed it again about how many times it's misdiagnosed. In my clinic, in the range of about one out of every four or one out of every five of my patients has a component of their pain that can be referred to their sacroiliac joint. There is some literature that up to 40% of lumbar spine fusion patients will have complaints referable to the sacroiliac joint. One reliable finding that I see in my patients with sacroiliac joint dysfunction, when they point to their area of pain, they very reliably point either to the right or the left side, just below the lumbar spine, directly over the buttock. It is very common, so it's important to have awareness of it. If you don't know about it, you can't diagnose it and you can't treat it. Positive response to a diagnostic injection and you've ruled out other potential pain generators, then you can be quite certain of your diagnosis. There's many different ways to approach the conservative treatment of SI joint pain. There are some patients uh, who will respond to a course of physical therapy. For my patients who have unremitting SI joint pain, who have failed appropriate conservative care, minimally invasive SI joint fusion is an option. I generate a three-dimensional model of the pelvis and I use that computer system to place triangular implants across the SI joint through a series of small incisions. The incisions are positioned on the lateral aspect of the buttock. The surgery itself takes approximately one hour and in my practice, patients typically go home the same day of the surgery. I've been doing SI joint fusion surgery now for approximately six years. In my experience, patient satisfaction after this procedure is extremely high. Most of the patients that I treat did not know until they came to my clinic that their pain and their symptoms were actually coming from the SI joint. And when we stabilize the joint minimally invasively, the vast majority of my patients are surprised and extremely pleased by the amount of pain relief that they have. Before the surgery, I could not stand up on hard surfaces more than just a couple minutes. Now, I can stand up as long as I want to. One of the things that I was mentioning to Dr. Jorgensen when I uh, was looking to have the surgery was I'm a heck of a golfer as far as playing all the time. And he warned me it'd be a little while before I'd be able to play golf. But before, I could only swing about halfway through a normal swing and now when I swing I'm able to complete the full turn like I should and have my chest pointing towards the target whereas before I couldn't do that and I would always have to flip my wrist to get the club around. Now it's a hundred percent golf swing. I can sleep now whereas before I couldn't lay on my back for more than a minute or two and I was in excruciating pain. Now that I've had the surgery I can lay on my back and sleep where I could not before. Sacroiliac joint dysfunction is a common cause of low back pain and disability. Unfortunately, it's often overlooked. If you've been dealing with SI joint dysfunction or if you suspect you may have SI joint dysfunction, then please uh, call my clinic and I'm very, very happy to evaluate you.